Hello, this is Jessica Fox from Florida Virtual Bookkeeper, and today I want to share with you some of the most frequent mistakes I see in the sales tax module in QuickBooks Online that tends to lead to expensive cleanup and potentially tax penalties if you file sales tax returns incorrectly. One of the things that you want to keep in mind is that the sales tax module in QuickBooks Online is different depending on when you signed up for your QuickBooks Online account. So if you signed up for QuickBooks Online within the last couple of years, you have what they call the automated sales tax center. I use quotes because the automation can only go so far. If you have been using QuickBooks Online for many years, you will probably have the old version of the sales tax center, which is some people call it the manual one. You can tell which one you're using by the graphical interface when you go to QuickBooks Online in the sales tax section. So if it looks like a website that from the early 2000s, you have the old sales tax center. If it looks like the rest of QuickBooks Online with that modern look and feel and colors, then you have the new sales tax center. One word of caution in my experience is that if you do not do all of your invoicing and payment collecting in QuickBooks Online, meaning if you don't only send invoices from QuickBooks and only collect payments from QuickBooks, you are selling through other channels and collecting sales tax in other apps, my advice to you is to not use the sales tax center in QuickBooks Online unless you have a qualified bookkeeper that knows what they're doing, keeping track of it. It's very easy for things to go wrong. So if you're an e-commerce seller or you own a store or you use a separate tool to process your payment processing, say you are a massage parlor and you use Vagaro, or you are an e-commerce seller and you use Shopify, or you have a cash register that does the sales tax calculations for you, the easiest thing for you, the least headache would be to not enable sales tax in QBO. Instead, use the reporting of your tool. All of those platforms have a report that will provide you the information that you need to file your sales tax reports. You will record these numbers in QuickBooks because you still need your books to be up to date and accurate, but you will not be relying on QuickBooks to do the math for you. It's very common for me to see somebody that uses a third party tool that calculates the sales tax and either that tool is syncing into QuickBooks Online and the transaction is syncing into QuickBooks Online directly. QuickBooks is calculating the tax based on the data that came in but that's not really matching what you collected in real life. And then those people are filing sales tax returns based on what QuickBooks determines. Then months or years down the line, they or a new bookkeeper or their tax accountant or an auditor realizes, oh, this is wrong and it's only wrong in QuickBooks. And once it's fixed, guess what? The sales tax liability changed and suddenly you have to do an amendment to save yourself that headache. For additional details on how to do this, I strongly encourage you that you have somebody that is knowledgeable to set this up for you. If you are the business owner and sales tax and accounting is not your expertise, I strongly advise you to invest in at least having somebody to set it up for you and then show you how to keep up with it correctly. A second error that I see very often with QuickBooks Online Sales Tax Center is with toggling the taxability of items on and off. What this means is that in QuickBooks Online, the Sales Tax Center calculates whether something is taxable or not based on how the product or service is configured. These are the items that you would add to an invoice or a sales receipt. How you set this up is very important. I see very often business owners that are just in a rush, so they just type in the name, click save, and keep on going, not paying close attention to the different settings that need to be configured when setting these items up. 
You need to make sure that when you're setting a new item or service that you are selecting whether or not it's taxable. And if it's taxable, depending on your state, you may have to specify what type of item it is because different states have different rules and some items are taxed at a different percentage than other items. And QuickBooks can only do the math if you tell it what it needs to calculate. If you're not taking the time to set these things up correctly, that sales tax calculations are going to be wrong. Another thing that is very important is when you're actually using those items that have been created in QuickBooks and adding it to an invoice, if the item is marked as taxable, do not uncheck that box in the invoice. Because if you do that, your sales tax calculations will be wrong. So these are just some samples of some things that can cause issues with sales tax that in terms of the calculation side. Now, I want to also give you a heads up of the most common mistake that I see in QuickBooks in regards to paying the sales tax liability. If you're using the sales tax center to calculate your sales tax liability, you need to record the payment in the sales tax section of QuickBooks Online. Do not go to the right check page or plus icon create expense or do not add it from the bank feed and just select sales tax payable because that was not correct. It's not going to clear that liability that's recorded in the sales tax center and you're going to end up with a little bit of a mess in your balance sheet account that can be a headache to unravel. So I hope that this is helpful. And I know that this is just a very basic bird's eye overview, just some things to keep in mind and consider if you are required to remit and collect sales tax and are using QuickBooks Online. If you have any questions, I recommend that you reach out to your bookkeeper. If you do not have one, I strongly advise that you at least have one that can set things up for you, do a diagnostic health check on your file, and give you the advice and training so that you can have a solid foundation and be on the right track. That's actually not me, but if you have any questions, I will help to the best of my ability. Have a wonderful